Welcome to Land of the House, I'm Seth. Langston Alternative Power has sent me another hydro unit. It's a small four inch unit that has a plastic test prop on it. And uh, I'm gonna be kind of doing some testing with this and uh, hopefully we'll get some really good results. At the edge of my property, there is an eight foot waterfall that I'm gonna use for my testing grounds on this unit. I have several videos planned, flow rate changes, I've got a siphon versus direct top fill and a host of other ideas that I want to try out. But the waterfall has got a, uh, I guess a dam that is about five or so feet across, if I remember correctly. Uh, and I want to basically come up with some way of mounting this unit into that waterfall. So uh, let's load up the four-wheeler and use a tape measure to see how long across that dam we need to uh, build a board. Also, I installed a ram pump, I guess it was last year, maybe two years ago, I can't remember. And I left it out there by that waterfall. So I want to uh, remove all of that and pull all that back out of the creek just to make things look a little prettier. So let's load up on the four-wheeler and head down to the water. That battery is almost gone. It's been several years. Uh-oh, small problem. I didn't open my other door. Okay, we're down here to the waterfalls. I have noticed that some beavers have been blocking up some of the, uh, the creek over here, and it's brought the water up a little bit. Anyway, here is an eight foot waterfall, and I thought that would be perfect to test out this hydro unit. As you can see, there is uh, at least 60 gallons a minute flowing over there. So we should be able to pull a couple hundred from this before it drains everything out. And the uh, ram pump that I'm wanting to remove is the one that I siphoned over here. Comes over that, drops down here, heads off over to right there. Basically it froze and uh, busted the pressure tank. So we want to uh, pull all of that out of the water. With this hydro unit, what I'm thinking is kind of the same concept. We'll measure the rock here and it will dip down into the water a little bit pull over and then down so you can see the water level is right at the rock so it won't have to siphon over much just a couple of inches before it uh, heads down right in here and we can get our power created i guess we'll try to remove this before we uh, start measuring that rock I may walk down there and cut some of that out. If I brought uh, this tool, I can cut that out. And while we're here, let's just go ahead and measure this rock. Man, more than I thought, 76 inches. All right, cool. I do have a 2x4 that can fit across there. There's my screened intake. It's pretty well dirty there. I have seen several snakes down in here, so hopefully we won't meet any of those today. Yeah, so this pump froze during the winter time, and uh, the cap is what busted off of here. Ooh. And now the whole pump <laughs> full of ants too. Yeesh. Okay, I've got a board here that I saved over from whenever I was building the shed here. Uh, 2021 prices, that's like, what, $200 worth of wood. Okay, uh, also one cool thing, I measured from here to here on my little ramp, and it's about 76 inches. So that's basically the uh, size of the rock we're going to be working with. And I've got the hydro unit here. So the thought is, let's say this is where the, uh, the water is flowing in that direction. I can basically cut this board so that I have a, a little piece here that cuts down and kind of locks this into the, the waterfall. 
So as the water is pushing, it'll just uh, streamline against that and hopefully not flip it up and over. And so on the other side, I've got this board here that I can, I guess, mount to, uh, well, I guess it would make the most sense to have it over here. I don't know. I guess basically the, uh, the water has to flow up and over. Yeah, I think it'd be kind of nice to have it out of the way of the mainstream of water. So let's go ahead and cut it to what we need and then we'll mount that board there onto this side so that this piece can be mounted in there. Uh, so it's gonna look kind of like yeah, that. And that pipe right there will go over the, the rock that's over there and we can just siphon through. And my thoughts are, whenever we actually get this plumbed, the pipe will go across here and then have a 90 degree on this side. So I can put a cap on that end, turn this up, fill it with water, turn it down, pull the cap, and it will start the siphon. Anyway, that's the plan for right now. But So what we basically need is to measure out, I think, 70, uh, well, let's see. 78 inches would have gotten us all the way across the rock. So I want to have another uh, eight or so inches over there, and then this is gonna just drop down. So, man, that's just about enough board, huh? Let's see here, what we got? So that's eight foot. So we wanna have 77 was our minimum number just to get across there. And so if we wanna have what do you think? That's a five and a half. So I don't know, let's just do eight there. So like that'll be eight inches across. So we can come over here and say, let's cut this at 86, I believe. And that piece right there can be used to tilt down into it. Cool, all right, 86 it is. I just want to attach this board here to the end as the uh, the way of keeping this from flying up over the dam. And I've got some, what is this, three inch screws, I guess. Now this is just for testing purposes. Whenever an actual install is done, I'm sure there are tons of other ways you could get this working. Okay, cool. So hopefully you can see that. And the idea is that this will butt up against that rock and not be able to wash over. <laughs> hopefully, we'll find out. Probably should flip that around because this board has got a bow to it. It would make more sense to have that facing down. Okay, I'm gonna do that real quick. Just swap this around. I flipped the board around so we can work with this. The idea is a board like this one right here will be mounted on this side. And so yeah, the hydro unit can go here and needs to be pretty close, I guess. So, uh, but the board can't be that tall. Let's mark out how tall we want it. Um, well, hmm. Yeah, I guess about that should do it. So I got that board locked in. I'm going to step out about an inch or so for this one to be mounted. Okay. And that way, yeah, so that's going to be fine. I'm just going to go ahead and lock this down where it's at. Okay, that should do it. So now this piece can be mounted uh, one strap around the top up here and one down below. And there's enough board down here that I can even put one more strap across the four inch pipe if I need to. All right, before we can move on with this, I need to get some of that metal plumber's strap and then also a, uh, I guess a 90 down here to turn into the water. So one of the tests is gonna be siphoning over where I go down couple of inches with that 90 and siphon over. And then another test, I'm gonna have some sandbags that will bring all the water to this one point. And then I'll let the, uh, basically let the water pour into the top of this with some kind of catchment funnel. 
So we'll have to rework this design a little bit for all those tests. But anyway, um, we'll uh, come back to that in just a bit. So I have got a ram pump test that I want to do with a half inch pump. It's a siphoning up and over something uh, kind of video. Uh, real quick before we get into that. Carpenter bees are out and all of this is regular untreated lumber. And I was debating whether or not I should put anything up under here. And I think that will actually solve my problem. So I will go ahead and put some kind of sheathing under here. Have to do some fancy editing around this post. But anyway, that'll uh, keep the carpenter ants from drilling into all of this. I've been killing a couple of them down here and it's uh, quite a pain. Anyway, so back to the ram pump. Last year, I tried to do the last pump video of the year, which was gonna be what happens if you put way too much head pressure into a ram pump. And so I hauled the pump way up the mountain here. The test took too long, didn't get it finished, and never happened. So I wanna go up there and get that pump off the mountain so we can begin some testing with the half inch pump down here at the house. So let's hop on the four-wheeler and go up the mountain and get that pump. On our way back down with the pump, I'm also going to stop and repair all of the connections of the hydro system. So as the uh, the weather basically went from cold to hot, cold to hot over the winter time, the uh, connections here loosened up. So I just need to go back through here and make sure they're all tightened down all the way up. So we'll come back down and do that. That's as far as we can go on the four-wheeler. Have to walk the rest of the way. Sorry about the noise. My neighbor's hydro unit is right here. Just uh, plunking away. So the uh, drive pipe that I have is half inch and it just goes way, way up the mountain. I'm hoping I can just pull the rocks off of this thing and it will just come right on down. So we'll find out here. My neighbor said he made a new intake for his hydro system. Someday I wanna go up there and look at that and see what it's all about. But anyway, today we're gonna to get this ram pump going so I can make a video for you. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, walk up here and pull these rocks off of this thing. It's gonna be fun. At some point, this creek will have three hydro units running on it, which will be quite a fun video to make. Okay. It just goes on and on, so let me pull all this out. Looks like his system is running at about 50 PSI. I forget what the flow rate is. All right, so here's the pump that I'm wanting to take down. Hopefully it's still in good working order. Yeah. Nope, <laughs> looks like it also froze pretty good and uh, busted that portion right there. It's always fun to see what the inside of a spring valve looks like. So anyway, we will uh, have to remake a half inch pump to test down there. But at least we can get this off the mountain and pull the uh, pipes down as well. Hopefully this is all the maintenance on this pin stock I have to do this year. Let's get these loosened up here. You can probably see, keep that one cinched down. There we go. All right, so hopefully I'll just be able to slide these two back together. We'll see how well that works. It's gonna be awkward enough. I think I'll just remove the uh, fence posts. your trip. Ugh. The lower pipe is still full of water. Okay, that's gonna be a challenge. 
So how was your 2020? Ours was uh, different and crazy, and I'm glad that it's hopefully changing a little bit. 2021 is just as bad with lumber prices the way they are. Uh, just let me know your thoughts here. All right, let's go ahead and drain some of this water out. So the YouTube channel in the start of 2020 had about 68,000 subscribers. And by the end of 2020 had 120,000 followers, which is crazy that it doubled in one year. And the uh, views were about the same as far as uh, doubling. So crazy stuff. And now the channel is growing even more. And there comes a point in a YouTuber's life when you just can't keep up with comments. So if I've missed your comment over the past year or two, I'm sorry. I get anywhere from 10 to 100 a day and uh, emails and Facebook messages and all that. And I'm just uh, just keeping up with what I can. So just wanted to mention that. But anyway, write down below how your 2020 was and how 2021 is any different. Previously, I used a torch to get this together. Hopefully it's not necessary today. There we go, making some progress. Okay, a little bit more, like a quarter inch. Nice, okay, cool. Let's put it all back together and hopefully cinch it down tight enough to get it to stay. Sorry, it's super windy now. I've got all the pin stock tightened back down and we have the half inch ram pump down off the mountain. Of course, it's all busted up. So that means we've got two busted pumps from a year ago that uh, had I drained, they would not have cracked up. But anyway, they are what they are. So we're gonna build another one and then go do some testing real quick on a siphon. Uh, that being said, that's a different video, so I will be back with you in just a bit for something else. Okay, I'm back again. It's been about an hour. So I've got a little ram pump test set up here where I'm filming the siphon idea, and it's working out very interesting. Uh, but I need a place to have water go up. So I was thinking, why not use this clothesline with some rope and toss it over this branch right here, and that would give me... I don't know, 20 foot or so to uh, lift water up to. So let's see how well I can toss this wheel up there. Probably take me a thousand tries, but let's see what we can do here. I hope I can get you going on. I don't know if you can hear that, but a big old tree just fell in the woods somewhere. All right, let's see if we can do this. The goal is to toss it over that branch in one try. <laughs> Got it, nice. That was actually unexpected. <laughs> Let's see if we can uh, shake this enough to get that to fall down here. <laughs> All right, come on now. Finally got it over there good enough that it's hanging down so I can access it here. And now I need to just cut this rope so that I can uh, have the rest of this on the actual pulley itself to go up and down with the garden hose. Uh, so let me just cut here, I do believe. Yeah. It's always good practice to burn the ends. So let me use my little lighter here. So my thoughts are I'll put a rope on this pulley. And so I just have to pull this up once for the season. And whenever I'm ready to pull this back down, I just 
pull this end up and it's back off the tree. And that way I'm not constantly rubbing this rope on the tree. It'll just be pulled up once and this will do the work pulling this part of the rope back and forth. So let's go ahead and get that fed through. Something that effect, he'll come back. Okay. <laughs> All right, so once I have this run through with enough weight on it, I can then hoist this up there. I might even just make a loop. That would probably be the easiest thing. A loop tall enough that the kids won't be able to touch it, and yet I can uh, hoist a garden hose up there. I like that idea pretty good. I may end up reworking that a little bit, but I got the hose up to whatever height that is. And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna work just fine for this little simple test. Basically, I just wanna see what happens if I siphon over versus not siphon over to have head pressure. But anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there for this video. But I just wanted to show you that uh, I'm thinking about some ideas for making this pulley system. There were four carpenter bees flying around the shop and I took fly swatter and got them with uh, three swings. Two and one was pretty cool. But there are more getting up into this hole right here on the house. Like that guy right there. Let's see if we can take a hat and get him. Gotcha, ooh, that hurt. <laughs> Didn't get him though, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some caulking in here and hopefully it'll stop that hole from attracting more of these bugs. This time of year is crazy with the bugs. Cool, that should do it. Whatever bug was currently in there is probably not very happy. Ugh, bugs are just the worst. I'm here in the shop and my door now has a couple of hornets going in and out of a little hole right here. Let me wait just a second and see if we can get one of them to come out or one to go in. I don't even know how they found that spot, but there's a couple of screw holes right there on the top. And for some reason, one of them is open, I guess. Okay, there he goes. Did you see him? All right, let's put uh, some caulking in that hole as well. I think they're hornets. Maybe they're honeybees, I don't know, but I don't want them in here. So let's add some more caulking. Yeah, I don't get how that's even a thing. The hole is like big enough for one bee to go in. I don't know. It's been a couple of days. I had to go buy one of these 90s. Uh, I also got a cold, so if I sound a little weird, uh, sorry about that. Also, four inch pipe. And let's go ahead and mount this over here. My thoughts are I can take some of this plumber's strap and basically attach this right here to that board and then I can measure and cut the PVC pipe here and it will go from here on over to where the 90 fits in there and uh, that'll just be able to swing in there so anyway let's get this attached first I'm gonna have to go buy some more of this plumber strap tomorrow don't have quite enough let's see what we need though hey, hey dude you got dirty feet yeah. Ew. Ew, dirty feet. How did he get dirty feet? Uh, just walking over in the grass. Your hands are all dirty. Check this out. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay, so that's the concept here. I'm going to have to buy some more of that metal strap to put on the bottom side. And I think that will be locked in nicely. And then I'm going to take that 90 and I'm going to measure it out here uh, so that it exceeds this piece. I can turn it, cut this pipe, and we'll be done with this portion. Uh, I may go ahead and add that treated piece right there to this side so that it will be consistent with that one over there. And anyway, that's the plan. This video has gone on way too long. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Hopefully very soon, I will be getting all of this unit into the water and we'll start making some power and doing all kinds of fun tests with this small four inch hydro unit. Should be lots of fun to uh, get that going. 
But anyway, look forward to that. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.